Dr. Isaac Asimov, professor of biochemistry at Boston Medical School and a leading science fiction writer, has written a great deal about the sociological implications of robots. He has formulated laws for their behavior. He calls them the three laws of robotics. Uh, the first law is as follows. A robot may not harm a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Number two, a robot must obey orders given it by qualified personnel unless those orders violate rule number one. In other words, a robot can't be ordered to kill a human being. Uh, rule number three, a robot must protect its own existence. After all, it's an expensive piece of equipment. Uh, unless that violates rules one or two. A robot must cheerfully go into self-destruction if it is in order to follow an order or to save a human life. Now, these laws are sufficiently ambiguous so that I can write story after story in which something strange happens, in which the robots don't behave properly, in which the robots become positively dangerous, perhaps, through some, through some, not exactly misinterpretation, but through some odd application of the three rules. But I always manage, of course, to pull my hero out of trouble by the proper understanding of the three rules. It seems to me that as robots become continually more advanced, that people will not try to keep it entirely a matter of metal and electrons. That there will be cases in which attempts will be made to make use of the very great flexibility and miniaturizability of, uh, of or organic living tissue. Uh, we are now at the stage where we can practically manufacture our own proteins. By the time this future is arrived at, I imagine we won't even have to deal with actually living tissue, but with synthetic living tissue, something we can organize to fulfill the functions of specialized tissues, you see, uh, but which may be created in the laboratory. And we will have our robot becoming less metal, more organic. At the same time, we will have human beings who will make more and more use of artificial organs of metal and plastic, artificial hearts, artificial kidneys, artificial lungs, uh, replace bones by light metal substitutes. In short, we may have a society in which robots will drift away from total metal toward the organic, and human beings will drift away from the total organic toward the metal and plastic. And that somewhere in the middle, they may eventually meet. Now, when we have a kind of metal organic hybrid creature, will it matter that he was originally metal and became metal organic, or that he was originally organic and became metal organic? Or will it not matter? Will we then have formed a kind of mixed culture, uh, which perhaps might be higher? more efficient, better, than either culture separately, if I can call the robot uh, system a culture. In short, is there anything essentially horrible about thinking that man has the right to create a pseudo-living system just as nature did? The true value of science fiction, to me, rests in the fact that it permits speculation and makes it respectable. The scientist is always inhibited somewhat when it comes to speculation. He can't, or at least he feels he can't, put himself in a position where he seems to be going beyond that which cold logic and the evidence makes reasonable. The science fiction writer, on the other hand, can leap across chasms where no evidence has yet filled in matters uh, and speculate in directions which might seem silly, perhaps, to a stolid scientist. And yet, 
such speculation is important, is useful, today more than ever before, tomorrow more than today. Things are moving so quickly that it's unsafe to go forward blindly anymore. One must try to foresee where it is that one is going as much as possible and also foresee what the reactions might be.